hey down here okay back with another live stream uh they've changed things let's go look at it uh normally i use my uh, this is my channel i was trying to see if it would come up on here like it usually does that's not what i usually use to monitor my stream i usually use the same link that i always used to get here and it looks like this now comes in really slow on both of the computers I've tried it on, it's not showing that I'm live. So now I don't know if I'm live. Um, you know, it might not be because they might have changed the, there. You can see the screen used to that stream key and all that junk was, you know, the, the preview was bigger and the stream key was down below, didn't even show up. And you, used to, and you couldn't see the chat without paging left and right. Now you can see the chat if there was any. I got a feeling I'm not live. <coughs> What is this? I just clicked on it. Um, you're trying to make you go through a hundred wizard thing to start your stream every time. That's just ridiculous. I hope that it still works. I think it will. I use OBS Studio. And, uh, you know, I don't have to go through any of this. They've always had that wizard thing. Well, it used to, you didn't have to go through a wizard. You get it set up and just click start. But uh, let's see, Don YouTube. I've noticed before when I tried to look at my, <coughs> there it is. Okay, so I am live. It takes it a while to come up. That's what I was fixing to say. So it takes a while to come up on your channel, but it comes up. You can watch it as it starts. And what I usually do is do it on my laptop that's, setting up above me here <coughs> but it looks like it's way behind watch it as it starts no, it's what not i usually do is do it on my laptop that's setting up above me here <coughs> so i'm gonna have to start using this looks like um <coughs> i was making another <coughs> <coughs> I don't know why I'm all of a sudden coughing my head off. Well, a while ago, when it started, I was making another video, not a live stream, just a video, and I just started coughing. And I couldn't quit, and I got a cough drop, and I realized, well, I really just need to stop the video anyway. Oh, look, now we've got we got the video feedback because uh, I muted the audio so it wouldn't drive me crazy coming through my speakers. Let's go to my. I, I'd rather be on that right now, anyway. Okay, so when it comes, see how long it comes takes to show up. Not too awful long, about the same as usual. You actually, it's all right to have a little bit of delay. Well, I mean, it's going to have some, but uh, a little bit of delay. Uh, I can't even remember why, but anyway, I, my brain's not working like I, as well as I had hoped once I started this. Well, I. Had to do a whole lot of fixing and setting things up and to get started doing any streaming today. Two, three hours, maybe four, I'm not sure. Okay, so if I can look at this, and I'm gonna I gotta put this somewhere. I don't really have room for more. There's actually more in this thing up here than there is. But what I guess I'll do is um you know, and that stupid bookmark just does it instead of letting you you know bringing up the deal well it comes up but it does it first it's really weird okay bookmarks not menu toolbar i want it there but you know here we go see can i drag it yeah i can drag it i think i'll put it between my i always put it on the left of my channel dashboard live i'll leave it like that because i can see it's live but the next time i do one i don't think that'll work uh it should probably gonna have a different link every time so um i tried to do it on my laptop like as i usually do and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and pause this and then i can just come back and start it playing again but um I tried to do it like I usually do on my laptop, and now that they've updated the code, it's using. I figured I knew it would, but I could tell it because I had tried out some of the new stuff, and I could see it using more resources on this machine. And that's only a single core 
that laptop, Dell 6000 laptop, is a single core, 1.6 gigahertz. And when I first started using it, that weight was fine. I could play for hours and hours. And I noticed ever since they started uh, changing the code on the page and, you know, the way it operates on the YouTube pages, the YouTube site all in general, that uh, I couldn't leave my my live dashboard up for very long. It would start overheating the machine. And you could, you could tell because the fan was running like crazy. And after a while, it'd, if you leave it for very long, uh, it'll end up basically on Pretty much locking up, almost locking up the computer. And it gets so loud you can't stand and listen to the fan. And you know it's bad for it. So uh, but with the Bane 8, I could do that until, because the Bane 8 a really lightweight uh, Linux distro. And um, it, could, it could handle it, but now it can't. Uh, and I rebooted it. I opened it up to the live dashboard and waited for a little while. Thought, well, maybe it'll be all right. And then it got louder and louder. So then I thought, well, I'll better re I'll close Firefox. It didn't change. So I thought, well, now it's got made it hot. So I rebooted it. And it's still not as loud as it was, but it's still, I can hear that fan pretty well. And, and it's just sitting there idling. See, I let it run all the time as my web server. But it's ju just sitting there. I might as well turn off my oops, my mouse and keyboard so that I won't accidentally do stuff like I just did trying to turn it off. Um, don't want to mess it up. But anyway, it's running my web server. It's my. That's what I'm using right now. <clears throat> and uh, so I guess I won't be able to do that anymore. <clears throat> so, and I won't be able to just leave the browser up and running while I'm doing a live stream either. Let's see how this one's doing. Yes, yeah, see, OBS is using uh, whenever. Oh, it's using more because uh, I'm running a camera. You're not seeing that. It's all the way up to 50, 49 to 55 percent, and it's not dropping. Usually, it'll be there for a little while and drop down. Let's go to the screencast and see what happens. Yeah, OBS is kind of using too much resources there, and now it's back to normal. Running that camera, live stream over the Wi-Fi must have been doing that. So, if that happens and I don't know it, then I definitely don't need more stuff running. So, I'm gonna close this and leave it so I can get to it quick. I'll leave that toolbar that at the top open um, I like to keep the Crusader open so that I can watch my backup video being made it's fine uh, but I'm gonna close it because I'm watch see that it's growing and it's everything's working with that that's the easiest way I got to tell that but I'm gonna close that too because when I get to going and I can't see whether my live stream see I won't be able to just look around and look over at the laptop I'll have to get over here on this machine go to the browser but I'm not going to leave any of that running in the background because I want my stream to work. Now, if the stream drops, I won't even know it unless uh, I happen to look up, and it'll tell me in OBS Studio, but that's after it's done dropped, you know. <clears throat> um, a lot of times I don't notice it because it's a pretty small area down there at the bottom right where it shows it. But let's get over here on camera four, and uh, let me switch to the wireless. And uh, let me switch to the wireless so I can go over there where it's at. And uh, see the little, there's my server. I'm going to plan on working on it some more tonight. My <clears throat> hopefully install Fedora uh, uh, 32 on it. And uh, <clears throat> I, already, I already went through it once. And uh, I was adding all kinds, of, everything I could see. And I was using, I'm using, the, I'm going to do it again. I'm using net install. Uh, it's called uh, well. It's called Fedora Server Net Install, but you can install any kind of. You don't have to do a server. You can do anything they got available, pretty much. And I was, and you can also add more apps. Uh, you don't just get the basics like you do with if you were just to install Fedora 32 Mate Desktop. Is what I would do otherwise. Uh, you just get the basic apps. But one of them errored out, and it, <laughs> I thought, and it. Uh, it made me just quit, and I was just—I had been working for hours and hours, and I just quit after that. Um, but I, it, I had no choice but to just quit the install. I couldn't go back and take out the apps that I—it was some of the apps I added. I don't, I don't remember which ones, but I'll have to look in my notes and stuff. But um, I couldn't go back and just deselect those and try again. It—I had to get out, so they don't have a way to do that. Before they didn't even have a thing to notify you before you. You ran through, like, you're almost through installing. You look like on the bar that you got a couple, you know, two to five minutes left, and then it just aired out. So that was even worse. But anyway, my bag here laying on the server. 
that's something I bought for the server. Um, I've already opened the bag. Well, I've already, I think I opened this regular bag too. I think. No, I hadn't opened the bag that it's in. So, um, what it is, is a 25 foot USB with a, um, <clears throat> in order to be that long, they need uh, some help. So what this, uh, they, what they have, I don't know what they say that it is, but what it is, I'm sure, is a uh, a buck converter to brace the voltage because you know your five volts is over 25 feet. Uh, you're going to lose uh, voltage in amps, you know, over that far of a distance, and so your your devices won't operate right. And so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and. Cut that whole top off because it's not the kind of bag I would save. It doesn't have a ziplock or anything. And uh, so I want to test this, make sure it's going to work. Yeah, I'll save it for a little while because it's got the tag and where it, where it actually came from. Oh, I uh, I didn't usually I buy stuff like this on Amazon. It's where I end up finding the best deals. But what does it say on there? This time. <clears throat> oh, the UFB uh, endoscope. We should be able to read that. We should all be able to read it. Okay. Came from... I'm standing up and leaning over looking at it. M -A -I mailed from zip 71748. Oh, so it was already in America. Well, I got it from Walmart, <clears throat> uh, is what I was going to say. So whatever supplier doesn't say the name of the company and stuff like it usually does. So whatever supplier it came from, <clears throat> I was thinking it was some Chinese-sounding supplier, but oh, it was pretty flexible. But, uh, oh, yeah. So here's the... Uh, I thought it was going to be real stiff. It looked like it would when I was looking at it. So it's just a 2.0 that this this server doesn't do, you know, a 3.0 or any of that. I don't have anything that does that, actually. But uh, <clears throat> get back on the... I'm glad that I hit me that I was on the wrong... There we go. Wrong place here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the reason I got it, like I got it, is uh, I'm planning on... <clears throat> see that door right over there? That's the closet in this room <clears throat> and uh i have decided uh, i think i'm gonna go ahead and put the server in the closet and so in order to be able to control it i'm gonna use, i'm still gonna use my four port kvm switch like i always do but in order to uh, be able to um, control it with my normal mouse and keyboard that i use always it's the only one i can type on the mouse only mouse i like uh <clears throat> my hp keyboard and my Microsoft and telemouse with the extra buttons and stuff. This cable going to the KVM switch got a regular, what is it, C USB, I think. So it should fit right in there. If I can hit the spot. There we go. So it goes in there. I'm not going to be using the VDA. This is, this particular cable actually has some broken conductors inside and when you try to use it it's purple i'm not going to use <clears throat> the uh, the v vga because i have a eight gigabyte video card in there i'm using hdmi cable so i'm gonna go ahead and hook that stuff up i didn't hook it up this time because <clears throat> i thought I, since i was going to do this i thought i'd just show it all and um let's see this might work I want to make sure this is not going to end up <clears throat> falling apart. I'm getting unplugged by the, just the weight of this or something. So I think I'll, my, my mic cable, I think I'll, yeah, I'm going to use this VGA as strain relief. Put it around there. Put it around there. And uh, <clears throat> that'll be pretty good. Keep this from getting yanked apart. I think I'll 
think I will put, I'm going to let out some cable and put it in. I didn't want the thing to just unwind all over the place. But I am going to let out some cable so that it will reach. Actually, I'm kind of doing that backwards, aren't I? I want to let out enough so that I can drop that down on the ground. Yeah, I'll do it like that. That should be plenty. I like how flexible that is. It'll be easy to work with. It's funny, it looks like the old early 2000s cable. Same, you know, that where you can see the foil wrapper inside, clear, clear on the outside, clear plastic, rubber, uh, not, not rubber, but plastic. I was trying to say what kind it might be, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to plug it in over there in case I want to use the other one. And my... Uh, Power cables are right there. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. It's never tried to come on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug these in. Usually I like to plug the power on last. A lot of times desktops will suddenly, out of the blue, just try to boot up. And if you don't have everything plugged in, then you got a problem to fix, you know? So. I've already got this stuff in the general area, but not just right there. But I have my analog remote, better known as a back scratcher. So I'll just take that and pick up everything. That's what how I got. It. I keep it in these cables under the bed, so that's how I get them in and out from under there. Just having to get down there. Usually I go ahead and do this before the video, I'll just spare you of people of this, but this time I didn't. <clears throat> so I want to uh, probably have to get my magnifying glass so I can make sure and read all this, all right? Let's see. Yeah, number one is over there. I want to use that. And when I get to really using this, and if well, if I put it get it in the closet and I get it to where I believe in order to get the heat out of the room, I'm going to have to put a vent in the closet to let that heat into the attic. I'm probably rigging me something up with, say, like a 120 millimeter computer fan. <clears throat> Um, I may have enough stuff to do that in the garage anyway already. But uh, as far as and the noise, well, that way I can shut the door. If, if I shut the door, all the heat, too much heat will stay in there and, and overheat the computer, I think. So uh, the, the server. <clears throat> but uh, and I'll just have to play it, you know, play it by ear, literally, see what everything sounds like, see if it's bothering me and. See if it radiates through the walls or anything where bother somebody in the next room or something. I may not be able to leave it in there. I won't know that till I get it in there. But um, originally thought I was going to keep it under my bed and just turn it off when, every night. But I really wanted to be the server. It's a server. Use it for a server, not just a powerful desktop. You know, number one thing I want it for is a powerful desktop. Number two is a server. <laughs> And uh, so I've been running my website on desktops and laptops for years. Well, you know, kind of ILO. I want to plug in ILO. But yeah, it, I could uh, see I've got three extra, three more ports, and I've installed my uh, install Fedora 32 web server on in a virtual machine is what I'm thinking, and then set it up to use port two. And if I want to need any other ports, you know, another <clears throat> actually. Well, we'll take it one thing at a time, but I could have the other. I could up to three. I could do, I might, uh, yeah, I might be able to do three. I might actually get my domain. I have to forward my domains to the same place, same IP address, and I might be able to, that wouldn't help. It has to be a different external IP. But anyway, I don't, you know, I, I won't have to share my, uh, since I have an, other physical Ethernet ports, I won't have to share my Ethernet 
with my main operating system and my server. I can put it, I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to <clears throat> put it on another port, the virtual machine on another port, and then <clears throat> that uh, should be help with security. That's the reason I never ran my server on the, my, my regular machine, because of security. I did not want my personal files on the same machine, virtual, same physical machine as my server, in case it got hacked. And uh, <clears throat> with the virtual machine, I think that'll be all right with the server because they're made for that, you know. But uh, but I will have to make sure. I've never had a real server before, so I will have to do the learning curve and make sure I think I know how to do it safely. But one thing at a time. First, I just got to get it. Get it going with uh, the Fedora 32 that I want on it. I'm trying to get this. Um, let me see what's going on with this thing. I've got it wrapped up weird or something. I don't know what I did. Not seeing the. Uh, there we go. It was just one one wrap <laughs> in the wrong place. So this is my. See, I already had this for years. I bought this. It's about a 30-foot HDMI cable. I'm going to go one more to wrap. No, that's good. That's where I had the tw twist tie. That should be plenty. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to use it for something else, and I never did. So this came in handy when I bought this video card. Turns out the way um, that the video card is made, the only, ports, only port I could get to <clears throat> was the HDMI without cut, physically cutting some metal out of this thing, and I didn't want to do that. So, uh, yeah, the, D the DVID, I made sure I got one with HDMI and DVID. My monitor only does DVID, but with an adapter, it does work with, uh, I keep bumping into this board that my, I got a board here that usually is turned towards there's nothing it's not sticking out like that but it'd be in the camera real bad if if uh, i mean no it would be oh i wanted to have the space under the so that you, when you're looking at things under the endoscope they weren't uh, you weren't looking at part of the board and part of the floor that that's why i did that it's working pretty good except for kind of keep bumping into it okay where's the thing so it has uh I think it has something like four. Oh, I've got them plugged good, so they don't actually let me try to stick something in there. It's got drop the cable. It's got uh, cable wants to turn the wrong way, and my my cables want to hang on everything. There we go. Is that going to be better? Let's see. I guess I laid that thing down the wrong way. I really am going to have to turn it over, I think, so that it won't try to turn the cable the wrong way from the way I need it. It's a pretty stiff cable. You don't want, and it doesn't, you know, these HDMIs, they're only about a half inch, maybe three quarters long, so the connector. So you don't want to fight them. There we go. Now it turns the way it needs to to go in there. Just the weight of the cable kind of makes it. It's fine, it's not, but boy, that'd be easy to break. I really need something. When I leave that in, put it in there to leave it, I need something to, uh, I gotta do something to protect that because uh, I don't know what I can do for that. I need a bracket that, <laughs> that screws onto the back of here and holds that and protects it uh, so that if I, uh, you know, once I get it in the closet, I've got a really tall, there's stuff in the way I'd open the door and show it, but. I've got a really tall file cabinet in there, and I'm going to set it on top of that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I'll be shoving it up. I don't want, if I forget and push on it or lean on it or something, I don't want to hit that against the wall, you know, and break it. So, because it won't be, unless I get really fancy and buy some, uh, you know, uh, some heavy duty uh, drawer slides. <laughs> I used to be a cabinet maker. I know how to deal with those things. But uh, some heavy-duty drawer slides. 
they would hold it, or tool, tool cabinet slides or something, you know. Uh, I, uh, I won't be able to pull it out. Uh, like, I tried the other day to move that. Uh, let's get over here on the, this camera for a minute. Working, yeah. Okay, Fedora 32, yeah, net install. I'm going to put that in there. I think I'll put it in the front probably because it's just easier to get to. Maybe, we'll see. Doesn't matter on this one. Well, let's put it in here. I think I can get to it. Yeah, I can see it. I can get to it just fine. There we go. That's not hard to get to. Okay, so. Oh, I forgot to switch the camera. God bless America. Okay, every time I move, I hang my cable on the, of my mic, my mic cable. Uh, yeah, I need a, I need a, I need a master control operator to, or, on that, that, well, that's a little different. I was actually, had a job as a master control operator at a TV station. That's switching the live programs and tapes <clears throat> and live programs. Uh, I need a <clears throat> guy who does the studio and all the switching and everything. <coughs> <coughs> forgot the name of that one. Let's see. But anyway, <clears throat> so I put it over there. Right. I can't reach that far, but you can kind of see the white on something sticking out there. That is the USB stick. So now it will boot up to that, and I can get into ILO. See, well, no, not ILO. I could get into ILO, but I don't want to get into ILO. Uh, I want to set it up to do remote uh, desktop, remote desktop, so that you can see the installer that way. And that's pretty easy to do. Let me go, well, uh, I want to make sure this thing works. Uh, if my keyboard and mouse works when I switch my KVM over there, then that means I'm good. <clears throat> but first, get on the desktop. I need to, let's open up the browser, make another check on my stream, since I can't see whether it's working without actually going to that page. Uh, Close that extra. I always have two pages open up, and that takes a little longer. Uh, looks like it's working just fine. Close that extra. I always have two pages open so, up, and that uh, takes a little longer. Okay. And uh, I was going to go to Amazon anyway. Yeah, I'm on the desktop. Okay. One advantage of monitoring, you know, looking at it on the machine you're working on, you know for sure. And if you forget, like I do, two seconds left, you looked at it, you know, you can just look right back. Okay, yeah, I'm in the right place. So, um, oh, I didn't get it at Amazon. I got it at Wally World. So used to that. <clears throat> Usually Walmart's more expensive. Uh, and so I usually don't end up buying cables there. But the same, it looks like the same cable by the same manufacturer. Seven ninety nine, can't beat that. The same one for uh, you know twelve or something on up to twenty five or so thirty dollars for the one that looks identical to this one. And it has four stars and fifteen ratings. That's a lot of ratings for Walmart. You don't usually see a lot of ratings at Walmart. It was free shipping. Arrives by September fourth. If you order it today, um, and uh, an active repeater—that's what they call it—an active repeater. I have to keep the uh, voltage and amperage up so that your stuff will work. And when I, uh, if if this one works good, I may just buy another one just like it, and then bring both of those ports around here <coughs> from the closet. <coughs> And one of them I can use to plug in USBs <coughs> and stuff when I want to without having to get up and go over there. <coughs> but, um, but you know, I want it here where I can have my mouse and keyboard and my monitor hooked up to it. 
so that I <coughs> I don't want to wor work with it remotely. I don't. I want it uh, to. I don't want. That'll be slow things down going through the network, especially since I have <coughs> two security cams that run all the time, and I'm doing two Wi-Fi cameras and Wi-Fi audio for my wireless mic right now. When I do streams a lot, you know. So let's see. Oh, well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to switch to my. Um, because uh, because of all that, uh, it's not. It's not. Now that I added that extra Wi-Fi uh, wi security cam, I just don't, you know, it's take it up bandwidth, and uh, my I never know when my uh, audio will quit over the Wi-Fi. Uh, wi so I don't, I'm pretty sure it's that, um, <coughs> not the, uh, you know, phones, because I've been using them for years, and <coughs> I don't think they've changed that much. But anyway, this is the one I got, and uh, I guess that's all you saw during that whole time. I, I'm I'm half confused here. Uh, well, if, if it works good, then we'll say, uh, so, yeah, it goes from, uh, see the type A, where's the other type? Type A male to type A female. Oh, it's type A. I always forget those letters. So it's type A, just the, the, stand, the first, you know, one that came out with type A male to type A female. Uh, for a while, I was <laughs> <laughs> thinking I might <laughs> want to, to go straight to the KVM switch. And then I decided I think it'd be better to do it like it is. <clears throat> I was, wasn't a hundred, I got, get a different, you know, top on the other end. But, uh, <clears throat> and I found some. But, uh, well, heck, when I saw that this one was, you know, eight bucks, I thought, heck, what's the difference? I'll just. And see, I can just, uh, anytime I want to, I can unplug that, leave the KVM switch cable on it, unplug it, and then plug it into any other computer right here in the rack or wherever I want. <clears throat> and it has decent ratings, so hopefully it'll be all right. <clears throat> it does have a couple of one stars, but... <clears throat> Boy, uh, Walmart's got really large techs, doesn't it? That's good. I'm just usually I'm having to go stay at 110 percent of uh, one size, 110 percent bigger. And uh, one size, 110 percent bigger. Oh, okay, yeah. And whenever I come go away and come back, it uh, it's not lagging. It doesn't and, stop. Uh, where I left Inside. off, it stops. It starts back up where I'm at, so that's good. That was. It used to do just the opposite. It used to just remember where you were and start back up there, and it was just a pain to try to monitor your live stream. Pause that. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to leave it open for a minute. <clears throat> I think no. I'm going to get off of here and get be on the, the server itself. So, <clears throat> oh, the other thing I need to do. Well, I could have. Let's see. Oh, I remember. INST space VNC. Oh, dot VNC. I better look and make sure. I'm trying to remember the command. It's a real simple command. <clears throat> uh, I may need the browser. to. I, th I think I've got it saved in a text file, how to do that. I just don't remember where it is. <laughs> But if I get in here in my documents, make sure that <clears throat> my desktop, okay. I really don't remember. There, go to Fedora 29 server info. That's probably where I would have been using it. Don't see it though. Okay, well, let's put it in alphabetical order. Maybe I can look through them quicker and find it. Looking for Fedora Linux. Nope. 
I was thinking. <clears throat> uh, last time I did a. Yeah, here we go. Installing using VNC. I got lucky there. I think maybe that's going to open up Firefox. I think it was an HTML file. Not doing anything right now. Oh, it just took me back. View file. Door 28. Let's see. Installation. Oh, let's open. I'm find the file for Door 28 doesn't open it up like I was thinking. No. Don't see it. This is why I can't just look through you know, lists and find things. Was there? There it is. Yeah, it's an HTML file. So I closed that prematurely. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm always worried about uh, it just happens. You know, if I leave too much stuff running, it'll lock the machine up. You know, if I already have the Firefox open, it'll open up the new version. If I just double click on it, it'll open up the old version. I have the new one running and not. Call it standalone mode. <coughs> uh, it's kind of like portable mode. Okay, I think it's inst.vnc. Yeah, I was right. Okay, so what you do when you get to the boot menu, what I can't remember is what key do you hit? Uh, tab, I think. Edit the boot option. have been a little higher I think it's tab <clears throat> um, let's look and see hmm You can put a password in there. Well, you, what you do, I know, is you hit space, inst.vnc, you add it to the boot menu. And I think you hit tab to get that to happen. <clears throat> oh, I think you had to go there to see the instructions on how to... Been removed. Are you going to take me to this one? Yeah. see that's silly that didn't used to be separated like that the instructions should be all together in one place you can customize them in the <coughs> drop boot menu is what I'm talking about press tab <coughs> on biosystems or e on e u u e f i you know, I think they changed that. I think it used. I always remembered it as being E. I think it used to be E on BioSystems until UE. I can't say that right. UEFI comes out. <coughs> okay, so. And then I know you hit enter to make it happen. So. <coughs> it's something really simple. I'm going to go ahead and close the browser with it like that. Maybe it will uh, close that too. All right, now <clears throat> I'm going to get on. Uh, let's go ahead and do. You want? I have it set up so that I can do. Uh, oh, that's one in desktop. What I would need is two. I mean, camera four and camera two. I don't think I have that in here. I guess it, no. Okay, well then we won't try that. So <clears throat> I can either show the, uh, I'll just show my monitor, camera two. Yeah. 
and we'll, you'll be able to see what's going on. <clears throat> and and then I can switch to the, uh, <clears throat> let's see, which one is that? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's number four on the KVM. Yeah. <clears throat> Guess I'll have to get all the way up. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, and I forgot to mention, it <clears throat> sounds okay, last time I was working on it, I turned it off for a little while and then turned it back on, and it got super, super loud, and <clears throat> uh, and I finally realized it was the uh, fans on the 8-gigabyte v- video card, I think it heated up, you know, when you, just like, when you shut them, it's like a car, you know, when you shut it down, it actually heats up bef- before it uh, cools down, because the uh, <clears throat> heat before the heat dissipates <clears throat> and so i fooled around with it for at least 30 minutes finally thought well that must be what it is <clears throat> and it, it was because now it's it's kind of loud ever since i put the video card in it and i mess around with this with the fan settings a lot so i think that's the best i can get it <clears throat> but i should be getting something on the monitor here in a little bit oh if i switch to it yeah i gotta switch to the uh DVI input. <coughs> now it's ramping up some more. <coughs> Getting louder. Oh, way back down. I think that's just part of the normal startup. <coughs> there we go. Got a cursor. <coughs> This is the time when I get nervous about my stream being messed up and me not knowing it. <clears throat> but just can't can't see it now. Can't go back on my other machine without messing up my stream. <clears throat> so I trust that it's working. That's why I like to have another machine. The laptop's the best thing I've had to do that with. I don't have another regular monitor. Well, I have a, some CRTs out in the garage. But <sighs> temperature is seventy twenty three C seventy three Fahrenheit. It does a good job of cooling itself. Even with the video card in there, it's not overheating. <clears throat> so, but I was thinking, I wonder if if that video card fans are going to keep on. And actually, I found out, and I, I figured out that the the machine is. I wasn't sure it was able to control the fans on the video card. It does uh, through the PC. I thought that it's plugged into. <clears throat> And that's why they ramped up so high because it had got so hot. And so there was a, there we go. Now we're in the boot screen for, <clears throat> and f- it always defaults to test this media. Of course, I know it works. I've used it. So <clears throat> after the, I usually go ahead and run the test the first time I boot one, you know, one of these ISOs on a USB or a CD or a DVD. <clears throat> but after that, I don't need, you know, you're going to ca- try to catch it and, uh, you know, go ahead and boot it or do what you're going to do. So I'm going to hit tab. And so now there's an extra line at the bottom. You should be able to at least see it's there. <clears throat> and uh, hit space, I-N-S-T dot B-N-C, enter. That should boot it up uh, with VNC remote desktop server running. <clears throat> and uh, then once I see what the IP address is going to be, I'll go over on my machine and connect to it, and we do the rest in the with a you know good clear desktop video. Because <clears throat> even after I bought my new camera, it, it won't even do as good as the phones do at shooting at the monitor. So, <clears throat> so I don't have anything I can uh, do a video of a monitor and have it be legible. With the phone, you know, I have to zoom in. I can't put it. <clears throat> It would be okay if I could hold the phone right in front of my nose, but I can't do that. It can't work that way. And I can't. I don't have no way to mount it that way anyway. If I put it on my head somehow, then it would move so much. <coughs> 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 Warning. 
morning. Morning what? <clears throat> Anaconda. Could not obtain desktop path name. I think I saw that last time and it wasn't anything that was a problem. ATK BR IDG. Unknown signature. Oh, please manually connect your client. It's already ready, but there's all these funny little warnings that got my attention. ATK Bridge, unknown signatures. Some about a, some kind of signature, <clears throat> like a D5 or something. I don't know. It's not saying what kind. Anyway, the IP address is 192.168.144, port 1. It's not 5900 or 5800 as usual. Uh, and in the instructions, I believe it says some, it doesn't say port one, it says something else. I don't remember what. But the last time I, I didn't pay attention today, but the last time I was reading them, <clears throat> I thought, well, I better make sure what port. I, know, I wrote it down and it was wrong. So uh, I got to go. My allergies have decided to go nuts. Uh, well, actually, before I started this video, I was making another one and started coughing like a maniac and I. I can't go more than five or ten minutes without getting like that again. But I've been wanting to do this. For, I think it's been two or three weeks since the last time I was able to work on this. <clears throat> so I'm wanting to do it. One and two don't want... I better write it down. I'll never... I probably have it written down somewhere over here. Let's see. I think I do. Let me look from the last time. Oh, commands. I had it all written down. It's sitting on top waiting for me to use. Commands to... Uh, oh, no. That's something else. That's completely something different. Never mind. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, I was thinking I'd put it under the bed, the server. was thinking I'd put it in the rack then after that. But I'd have to either just run it in the daytime or build a... But after I worked on it long enough, I thought, you know, it don't matter where I put it in the rack, it's going to drive me crazy. And I'd, building something around it or buying a case, the case is there any good, you know, would really do any noise reduction or anything, would be real expensive. Okay, I've got my notes now. And I actually made a password and everything last time. <clears throat> Well, if I've got it written down, oh, there it is, st.vnc, I did write that down. It doesn't look like I wrote down an IP address, but I'd, I'm sure, I've, I'm pretty sure I've already set the, uh, I'm going to write down uh, the IP because I think I set it in my router to always get the same IP. <clears throat> One six eight dot one fourteen. Four one four B and C. Now, when I get over to my regular machine, I won't. I'll have it. <clears throat> 192.168.0.114 port 1. Okay. <clears throat> Starting to switch now, but it's so switch. It still works great, but it doesn't land in the place you want it to very good anymore. <clears throat> Most of the time I don't switch these days a lot. But... <clears throat> Then I gotta switch the actual buttons on the monitor to get back to VGA connection. <clears throat> I used to use the DVI input, but this Lenovo i5 doesn't have anything but VGA, and you can't even put a video card in it. <clears throat> it doesn't even have a. All it has is standard PCI ports, one of them, and they don't really make PC, regular PCI video cards anymore. <clears throat> okay, so desktop. Let's. 
go ahead and check the stream again before I <clears throat> go any further. There we go. Showing what I was just doing, looks like. <clears throat> I think. I don't hear myself yet. There we go. Showing what I was just doing, looks like. Yep. There we go. It's just a little behind. Okay, so, yeah, I don't actually have to mute the audio. I can just pause the whole video. <clears throat> Let's see, where's my... There it is. Remote desktop viewer. I bet... Yeah, the last thing I used was that. There's no no password, so all you gotta do is click on it, and there we are. And then uh, I get fit the fit the screen, and then let's see. Full screen is F11. Let's use F11. Yep, yep. Okay. If I don't remember that, then I won't remember how to get out. And if you put your mouse up there, sometimes it'll come up and tell you, and sometimes it won't. You'll be stuck. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> one thing I'm not sure about now is am I what mic am I on and everything? I'm on the okay, I'm on the S and fifty eight, that's what I want. Yeah, I'm gonna close the browser now because it's only gonna use up resources. <clears throat> okay. So this is the the way Fedora's server has looked for quite a few years now, server <coughs> installer has looked for quite a few years now. I believe they still call it Anaconda. Anyway, English and English, you know, English, English United States, that's me. So continue. Click on it with the mouse there. You can hit enter too. It's a little slow at responding, so don't get, don't think it didn't work and start clicking on stuff. Just give it time. And uh, I don't imagine you hear the server with the SM58 because it's got the noise gate on and the compressor uh, on the lap. Well, and it, it's made, you know, SM58 mics are made to cut out background noise They're for live shows. That's why I like to use it. If I was using the lapels, you would probably hear a little bit of it. it, it I have a noise gate and compressor in OBS Studio turned on on it, but you will hear it more in them because they pick up everything. You know, they're not good at uh, canceling out background noise everybody wants to use a condenser mic for their for their uh, you know videos and stuff and people uh, whoever they gave them the, and i noticed that when you watch videos about how to do that uh, they always say get you a condenser mic yeah condenser mics are studio mics the good they usually do buy a lot of them will buy a big uh, not one of those big large diaphragm condenser mics for studios they do not cut out any background noise so if you make any noise or any your machine makes noise gonna pick it up same thing with these little lapels uh, you notice there's they sound okay uh, but I only paid like 20 bucks for this little it's a dual lapel setup they're cheap <clears throat> uh, I'm surprised at how good they can this set does I think it's because of the two lapels they're not stereo but uh, they go into a mono I mean they'll they'll send out their mono their mono yet they go into a stereo connector but it's not true stereo it's not a left and a right it's just uh, they just uh, put it out on two, you know, it's a TRS connector. Well, this one is made so you can plug it into a phone. So it's a TRS with adapters that would put it, you could plug it into TRS like your computer or whatever. So anyway, this is how it starts. Please compete the items. Uh, I like to go ahead and do the time and date first before I forget it because I'm not in New York. Um, you can... Either click around in here, or you can look up here. Um, oddly enough, I'm in Texas, but oddly enough, sometimes you can type and find stuff. And, uh, and it goes straight to it, but it didn't, so I'll just have to page through it. <clears throat> sometimes it'd say c Central Time is what I'd want, you know, but sometimes you have to go by the place you're at. Probably missed it. Yeah, it's not working. It used to work in the installers to just start typing and it would find where you wanted to go. 
really in a weird, it's not an alphabetical order. I mean, these are not even, <clears throat> well, maybe it is, and I'm crazy. <clears throat> so I think if I keep going to the top, yeah, it is an alphabetical order. <clears throat> I'm just crazy. Chicago, that is actually in my time zone, just barely. <clears throat> and uh, I want AM, P, AM and PM. Why didn't it let me do that? Must be not done with what it was doing yet. But America's Chicago. It doesn't say America, it's America's. We've changed it up a lot uh, in that respect. Come on. I want AMP. What is wrong with you? Network time. Yeah, I want that. And that's fine. <clears throat> Hmm. I don't understand why it's not. Oh, United States. There we go. Oh, now I got to do it again. But it went to Americas again. It went to Alaska. Oh, now it's letting me do Central Time. It's still not letting me do AM and PM. <coughs> well, I'm going to leave it like that. Wait, it moved to the wrong place, though, didn't it? Well, this is the weirdest, but I think it's going to be right. Okay, I'm going to click down there and hope that maybe it's just invalid time zone. I see. Well, I wanted it over here. It's got wonky on me is what it's done. It's probably acting up because... It's delaying because of me using a remote desktop. Hmm. Put it back on the United States again. <clears throat> there. Now let's see. Now it worked. Yeah, United States Central Time, but I don't have uh let's go back in there one more time, see if I can select AM PM. Won't let me do AM PM. <coughs> I cannot tell time the other way. I'm never was in the military. <coughs> okay. Installation source is already set to close the smear. That's good. Software, we'll do that in a minute. Destination, that's one of the first things we need to do. Okay, so I already set up my RAID arrays, so I've got, I want my operating system on this big one here. I'm going to go ahead and use automatic <coughs> uh, partitioning and everything because uh, they may have changed things up a little bit. If I usually end up doing custom because one thing that happens, <coughs> well, it's not such a problem now because they're using uh, the, the, the root directory used to be a ext3 or ext4. It was ext4 for a long ext4 for a long time. Uh, primary partition, and I would fill it up because I installed so many apps, and then I couldn't resize it without fear fear of breaking everything. <clears throat> uh, it, but now it's inside of the LVM, and you can resize LVMs pretty easily without. I've never actually done it yet, but. Since this is a you know 683 uh, gigabytes worth of space here, I think I'll be fine. They should automatically give me a big enough uh, root partition that I'll be all right. And uh, no encryption. The Blivet GUI is a, a partition editor. You really need to know what you're doing to do that. You can use the custom, um, or you used to could anyway, without. Uh, I mean, what am I trying to say? Without using a partition editor, <clears throat> it'll still do that for you. You just kind of tell it what you want. But you usually, if you do that, I, I think I clicked on it last time, and you have to tell it <clears throat> too much stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it right now. And I just went ahead, and there's actually two more drives. I went ahead and formatted them as their own little uh, <clears throat> drive pool or whatever, but they're separate. But I'm planning on taking those two drives out. <coughs> well, they're not for, 
for a minute. <coughs> they're not formatted. They're just <coughs> um, set up in the ra- with RAID by ra- the RAID <coughs> RBSU. Yeah, well, HP calls it, or they did at the time this server was made in 2010. This is a uh, HP DL380 G7. I didn't mention that today. <coughs> and it will run Fedora. It'll run Red Hat Fedora. Red Hat makes is a maker of Fedora. And so anyway, I'm going to go just like that. And then, uh, so that's already set up. Network, I like to give it the name that I want. See, here's all the different. It says it's plugged into ENP. Three. Oh, okay. EMP three. Oh, EMP three one. EMP four. Yeah, they're. Do- I forgot about that. They're divided up uh, just the way they are on the back of the machine. These two are a group, and those two are a group. And so I want to give it. I don't want local host, local domain. I want. Um, I do want local domain. But I'm not going to set up my website in in here. I don't want my this machine accessible on the internet. I want HPDL3. Whoops. G7. I think the last time I put it in there in capital letters, but I'm not going to do that. Sometimes that whacks some programs out. HPDL380 G7. Is that right? I don't want to mess that up. Yeah. H. I've got it written down. HPDL380 G7. I don't want to put any extra characters in there, like dashes and stuff, because I don't know. I think it might ta- will take it, but other some programs won't do won't work well with that. And it's a gigabit connection, which is great. Um, so I'm gonna apply, hit apply. I think you do need to hit apply before you hit done. So I hit apply and now. Doesn't show it up in here anywhere, but. That's good. I think that's a good idea to do that. <clears throat> Connected. I'm going to go ahead and do my passwords now because <clears throat> once I get into this, uh, it's a little different. Used to, you could uh, get the installation going and do these passwords and stuff while it was installing, but you can't do that now. Root account is disabled. What? I don't want root account disabled. I could not work without it. Okay. Uh, Do they match? I guess so. It would say they don't match. Allow root SSH to log in with password. Not on this. On the server, well, I don't like to do it on the server either. Well, you have to if you're going to copy files via F- SFTP. But on this one, I don't think so. If I, I think I could enact that if I actually need to. But. It's someone I'll be on facing the internet all the time. Well, I mean, I won't be running a server, but I'll be surfing the internet, which is the most dangerous thing, you know. <clears throat> uh, downloading my emails, you know, with uh, Thunderbird and all that. <clears throat> okay, now then. I'll need. Okay, now here's what I do I put my name spelled, you know, correctly, and then it automatically just pops in there. You want to use that? And that's great. I like that. I don't like to type in <coughs> long, hard things. Yeah, it says you can't use spaces in there anyway. I don't make them administrator because then anything, anything that needs to be root, it'll ask you for the root password, no pseudo BS or any of that. <coughs> you have to seriously pay attention if you got sudo set up because <coughs> it, sometimes it asks for sudo, <coughs> sometimes it asks for root or I think nowadays it's getting where you just can't do it anymore, you know. <clears throat> so this is how I like to do it. Now, oh, 
Oops. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, so I want to require a password to use the account. <clears throat> okay. Will be created. Now, keyboard English, English, language English, <clears throat> United States, close this mirror, uh, automatic partitioning. <clears throat> if you were wanting to do anything custom, if you don't already know how to do it, you, you're going to have a learning curve <clears throat> in there while it's in there before. Uh, okay, so um, now I need to do my software. Now, I forgot to look it up, but that's fine. See, it defaults to Fedora server. That's actually not a web server, oddly enough. And you can select. See, if you use that one, you can select what's in here as well. But there are bugs. Uh, there are broken <clears throat> packages or missing packages in the system. I won't make desktop. This is going to be my main desktop. Uh uh, running on the hardware on the machine, and then <clears throat> I will. Uh, uh, if I, if I end up doing what I think I'm going to do, I'll, I'll install Fedora 32 server. I may use this same, uh, you know, ISO to do it with. <clears throat> and uh, but you can. Uh, there's a lot you can do. So you can even set up a custom operating system. You can do pretty much all the desktops. I think that's all the desktops that Fedora. Uh, there's the web server. If you want a web server, start with this one down here. But I won't make desktop <clears throat> and the, the server I would install in a virtual machine. 3D printing, I don't have that. Compiz, well, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. The, that's our part of that already comes with the make desktop anyway. LibreOffice, made application, administration tools, audio production, you know, PDF and HTML. Books and guides. I don't think I need. I'm gonna do less th than I did last time because it didn't make it broke and didn't work. Don't want cloud infrastructure or anything like that. <clears throat> Container management. I can. Ins these are groups. What the, this is just click a box to install uh, groups. So you can do group installs. I have a script I made. <clears throat> I'll probably make a new one on this one. I'll go find my commands for seeing what groups are available and then. I'll save it all in a text file, and then I will turn it into a script like I did last time. <clears throat> because one of these, I'll probably just want to see it, I might remember. One of these broke my install, and it's always been a problem. I've used this. I used to, <clears throat> I don't know when I discovered it, probably sometime after Fedora 9. I started with Fedora 5. <coughs> I actually started with a remix of Fedora called uh, Blag Linux. In 2005, that's when I learned Linux on, and I went all the way up to Fedora 9 on it, and it was, the guy, qu he quit, uh, built, quit supporting it, he got too busy to do it, and, uh, <clears throat> well, and it, uh, Fedora, the 9 was broken uh, and wouldn't work, uh, when I tried to install it, it wouldn't work, and uh, and what had happened is he quit working on it, so I went to the Bain uh, Etch and a Half, uh, 4.5 Etch and a Half, and, and turned it into the Artist X, the first Artist X remix that came out but you had to actually how I learned how to make it well I learned how to install multiple apps in the terminal and then I realized later you could turn it into a uh, turn a your text file that you'd saved with all those apps into a script and just run the script so to copy and paste in a hundred apps you know uh, anyway in Debane you have to get it perfect or it won't run in, in Fedora, you can tell it to skip broken and uh, in the script, and it'll go ahead and run and install everything but the broken ones if there's something broken. But not in this installer. It, if it's broken, it hangs up. So I'm not going to do all these extra things, even though I might want them. Design suite should be safe. Developer tools. A lot of that, if you want to install things from just an RPM file, it's really good to have it. I'm going to leave that one off for now. No domain. Eclipse, that's the one that broke it. Editors. Now, I'll watch this break again. <clears throat> but if it does, I'll just have to start over again. Educational software. I uh, know I have these things on this system I have now, so this should be fine. Same 
Scientific. I actually don't use any of it, but it's, there's a, usually one or two apps in those things that you that I can actually any you know anybody could use. I don't do the games anymore. If I want anything, it'd just be a flight simulator. Headless management. I don't. Well, if it's broken, you can fix it that way. So yeah, <clears throat> it's only uh, works for the local network, not on the internet. But Fault with the headless management. Medical applications can actually be helped. I don't know what Milky Mist is. It just sounds neat. Don't oh network server, uh, network based servers DHCP key. No, I don't want DHCP keyboards or NIS. So if I want, I would probably want uh, a very secure FTP for SSH connections. But I don't think that might not even install it. Neuron. I don't know how to do neurons. Office and productivity. Python Classroom, I'll leave that off for now. It would be something to learn, uh, help you learn things. Python Science, Python's a programming language, which <clears throat> I actually did take a class on it, but I didn't end up finishing it. I tried to take How to Build a Self-Driving Car and Python, and I think something else from the Google Udacity when it first year it came out. Uh, couldn't handle all that. And it was moving, you had to go real fast, and I couldn't do it. Robotics development, I have that. RPM development tool, security lab is useful. Wait, if, it, if it's anything in there broken, there might be something really new that doesn't work. Uh, it's mostly all command line stuff that I don't use anyway. System tools should be all right. Text-based internet, once in a great while. Window managers, those are other window managers beside Mate Desktop. I'm not going to do that one because I don't think it, there's any. I think I've done it before and it wouldn't in, interfere with anything in May, but <clears throat> I really don't ever use anything. But, you know, I just use what's there. I don't go messing around with it much. And there's no telling. I know before I have tried three or four times to run <clears throat> this installer, and, and each time I would run into another set of apps that was, didn't work. So I'm trying to pick the ones that I know I have on this. Uh, or door 28 system that should still be okay you know and not the ones I'm not so sure about <clears throat> and then uh, whatever else I want I know there's quite a bit more that's not in this list that I'm gonna want I'll get it out of my <coughs> need to get it <coughs> from my old script or build a brand new one <clears throat> I'm afraid the old one might be too old to run and work a lot of it might some of it might have the name changed slightly or something missing or discontinued or something. So let's kind of go over this again. 3D printing. Well, I don't have a 3D printer, so. I do use CVS files some, but I do that with LibreOffice. <coughs> I do use Git once in a while, but uh, that's a software repo, I guess you would call it, repository. It, I don't, they don't call it that, I don't think, but that's what I'm used to. This is where these are coming from, from the Fedora repositories. This downloads everything, the newest version, off the Internet. This is not on the ISO. That, it takes longer to install, but it's only 20, 30 minutes, and uh, usually, <coughs> and... Uh, well, with I have 200 megabits download and 10 up, so if you have a slow connection, it would take longer. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to put any games for here with this because what if something's not working? <clears throat> But if you want to install any from uh, apps, which I do some, from time to time, from an RPM file that you download from some developer, say on Git or, or something like that, uh, GitHub, that's the name of the site, GitHub, uh, then you'll need to build, be able to build RP, the RPM build, for instance. And there's more tools in there than that. But 
Yeah, okay. So that should be all right. So I'm going to say, okay, and hope that it doesn't hang up on me this time. But it's saying error checking software selection. Let's see if it's just going to be all right. I hope not. I hope it's not messed up. I don't know. Usually it says we're checking it, not error checking it. Hmm. Yeah, you can't even be able, uh, There's an error of some sort. I hope, wonder if it's going to tell you where it is, where that error is. Click for details. Okay. Ah. Maybe they've actually started doing this where they'll tell you what's wrong and you don't get, you know, nearly get trying to install it and it breaks. Okay. Software mark for installation. Now, this is more like it. I mean, they must have been working on it all the time, all along. Uh, mark for installation. Because last time it just uh, went through and it said, uh, okay, this is not going to work. Quit the installer. That's all you could do. Okay, the software mark for installation uh, has following errors. Caused, caused by an error with your installation source. You can quit the installer, change your software source, or change the software selections. Now, I think this is how it used to be years ago, but it, I would, you'd go around and around and around trying to figure it out because there was a lot of bugs in it. Okay, modify selections, modify software source. Well, I wouldn't know where else to go. What is it? Are we missing... Nothing provides GEDA, GSIM needed by G GSPQ. I don't know what in the world that is. I don't think I can do a screenshot, but I'm going to try. You know what? I might be able to, <clears throat> especially if I uh, get out of the full screen. I bet you I can. If I click up here, <clears throat> I should be able to get a screenshot of that. There we go. It won't work when you're in full screen mode on a remote desktop, but it'll work that way. I want to modify selections. I just don't know which one would be there. Well, I don't need the robotics. Uh, it's just something I think is cool and I want to learn about. It could be in that comp is for all I know. I know you don't uh, actually have to install that comp is and emerald. I don't ever mess with that. Let's take it out. I just want to try to get it to install without a hitch here. Books and guides, design suite, editors, educational, engineering, and scientific. Well, if it's going to let me go back and take it out, I don't mind. Let's put, yeah, let's let's go ahead and try one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Okay. Oh, this still says there's an error. Let's see if it, sometimes this thing is slow to, yeah, there's an error. Okay. Click for detail. Same thing. GPS. GPS. P I C E U. Modify selections. <coughs> well, I have no idea what that would be. Yeah, see, it won't work. You, you have to get back into your main machine by clicking somewhere else out of the window you were in because the remote desktop takes over the mouse and keyboard <clears throat> okay I don't see what I don't know what in the world pack I can't even guess what package that might be coming along with because I actually just don't know what in the world it's <clears throat> that app is you know I don't know where it goes what it's going it might possibly go with this is now doing, like I was saying a long time ago, you've got to guess, if, unless you know what that app's name is. I mean, I could <clears throat> go search. Oh, there's still an error there. So, yeah, that's one way to figure it out. I think it'll go away. That didn't make it go away. That didn't make it go away. Maybe this will work. I don't know. Wait for a little bit and see. That probably came up while I was doing that, and I never saw it. I'll bet you. I'll bet it did.
Whoops, it jumped on me. What did I lose? <clears throat> Python classroom, office product. I don't want security lab. I decided that a while ago. RPM development tools. That was it. Robotics. I usually, I do always install those, but haven't got, haven't. Since Fedora 28, I haven't ever messed with them yet, so I'll leave it out for now. Python science. Sound and video. It's not working. I just took out and put back every thing that I've selected. I keep thinking that Confiz is the one to take out. Sometimes those hunches are good, you know. Uh, you can switch. Like and then go back and you, I don't you don't lose your ins, your your selection. Let's see if that'll just make it read. See, they're still there, the ones I made. <coughs> Click to make desktop. That didn't do anything. Okay, so I think I think it may not react fast enough, you know, this deal down here. Every office mate should be fine. I'll leave the confidence out. <clears throat> well, I'm going to take them all out and start over because the only way I got any idea how to and, and pay attention if that comes up while I'm doing it. <clears throat> I know that wasn't there last time because it didn't give me any options like what it's got now. Still saying that. <clears throat> Modify your. S <clears throat> Let's see if I can find out what that is. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I'm on my machine. That's one good thing about doing it this way on a remote desktop. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and just look it up on Google it. There, this is it right here. <clears throat> I've run into spy circuit simulation simulators all right i know what it is now uh that's electronics it's going to be in the electronics uh <clears throat> stuff but so we'll make sure we don't select that group Let's see wondering if i want to put it in Let's just go ahead and put it in. Well, if I put it in uh, Linux Fedora 32, oh, I think I I always just use Fedora because that's how I used to do it, and so I'm used to that now. Okay, so. Um, <sighs> G Spice UI is, is listed among the Fedora Electronic Lab EFL packages. Okay. And then to provide a GUI to freely available Spice Electronic Circuit Simulator. So, <clears throat> a lot of times these things won't work in here, and then when you run the uh, group installs, they do end up working. So, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, I don't know if a lot of times, but sometimes. <coughs> Checking my stream again. <clears throat> that's all they do end up working. So that's where I was just now, so that's good. All right. Um, but what I'm wondering about, maybe if I go out of here and go back in, it will straighten up. It's checking now instead of just throwing an error. Okay. Now I couldn't begin my installation, but since I'm hard-headed and I want what I want, 
I'm going to go back and put in the ones that I think will make it again. I don't want... Yeah, I'll watch down here this time, too. Am I in full screen? No. Okay. That way, make sure that thing will come up where we can see it. <clears throat> Books and guides, I don't use them much, but if you're ever caught with something broken and you can't get online, you know, <clears throat> maybe your internet's broken on your operating system, that would be good to have. Um, I have used that before. Cloud, container management, development tools. Genie tag. It says D development tools, but Genie tag is an uh, audio tag editor. I use that. Design suite. Wait. No, that's... That's uh yeah, and we have animation stuff like that. Development tools, we won't try that right now. Domain membership. Git and CVS. There are things in there I think that I use. Don't want eclipse <coughs> editor. Okay. Software for learning. Electronic lab. That's the one I don't I can't get right now. Scientific. I'll leave that out to you. List management. I keep thinking, do I really want that? I put that on my server. That would help me fix it if it was broken. Okay. I don't think it'll make it. Uh, I always just make sure the port's closed on the router. I mean, on the firewall. There are a couple of medical al applications that I've actually messed with. <clears throat> I don't really use them all the time, but office and productivity. <coughs> <coughs> I'm trying not to be I'm like a kid in a candy store. I want all this software even if I don't use it. Some of these are important like system tools. Okay. So, uh, no errors popped up yet. So, I think I'm going to be okay this time. I think it was just uh, that one that of the ones I had selected. Let's go through here again. I don't guess I'll add the comp is. I never mess with the, I don't. They're cool looking, you know, the fancy desktop effects, but they do use more resources. Of course, I'm using this server now, but they bother my eyes too much. I can't look at them. They move, anything that moves a lot. Look at the ones I didn't select, too. I might have skipped one that I really might need. Auto make. Yeah, auto make is another thing you need if you're going to, if you need to install something from source, you need uh, auto make or something, some app that will do make, make a package. I, I can't say it right, so I won't try to say it. Nothing came up. Okay. Saying that it's bad. So there you go. That's how you get yourself out of a mess if you get hung up in it. The last time, just a, within a month, it did not give me that option. It didn't have it in there. They must be working on it hard and fast because they do update it every every day, really. There's a nightly build you can download of ISOs, you know, in their uh, website. Unit conversion. Okay, that didn't bring anything up. Yeah, there's some things in there I could actually use in the engineering and scientific. Scientific, can't say scientific, but I can use it. Want some of it. Yeah, and those network servers aren't what you think. You're not going to get an SS. You're not even going to get an FTP, SSH, or anything. What I use, all what I've used for all these years. SFTP is what I use nowadays. And the more I use select, the longer it's going to take to install. So I could do that later with a group install. 
I do like a lot. There's quite a few cool security tools. Yeah, there that should install okay. There's there's some GUI tools that I do use. Uh, trying to see what ports are open and stuff like that. I think they come with that. So, kind of video I use all the time. So, doesn't get everything that I like, but it gets a lot of it. Now, I can't remember the names of most of it. You know, I just go and search in the app finder uh, and find. Uh, if I remember the name, I'll do that. If I don't, I'll search for what I want to do and look through the apps and see which one. And then I go, oh, yeah, I remember that one. Okay, window manager. Okay, we should be able to uh, install, uh, go back. See, there's no error down there. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's checking now. That's. I didn't pay any attention. I'm sure it came up while I was working. See, that's. It takes a while to do the checking, and check the dependencies. There we go. Now we are. Just wait. Not enough space in file systems for current software selection. An additional 8.77 gigabyte is needed. Oh, really? So the auto partitioning didn't give me enough room on the root drive, I guess. I'm trying to do a screenshot. It won't do it if the mouse is even over it. I, I think as soon as you put the mouse over it, it, it uh, captures the mouse. I am going to either have to take all that out <laughs> or go back. And, well, that tells me that I need to go back to my and do the custom, evidently. I'm going to have to. Okay. Yep, that's what I want to do. Cancel that. I want to change it. I'm going to go right here and full disk summary first. Okay. HP logical volume is 683.51 gigabytes. So all I can <coughs> figure out is, uh, huh. I wonder if it used, uh, One point four megabyte free. Oh, okay. Well, that's just un. You know they do. They do. Partitioners use that too. <clears throat> Wait, since there's nothing on those disks, that's what I need to do. There's nothing on it at all. You used to didn't have to do that. If it was an empty drive, you didn't have to format it first. Uh. But you know that might have happened to me the last time, last time I put Fedora 29 on my on a desktop for a server. You can get me a screenshot of that. So I may have to go and use. I don't think I necessarily need to. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, it's it's not using those, and I don't want to use those. Okay. There's plenty of room, 683 gigabytes. I'm going to have to go ahead and use this. Uh, this this is pretty, uh, it was brand new the, uh, back in, when I installed Fedora 28. The plan configure and changes will be canceled. I don't know if that's going to cancel all my software or what, but I still have to do it. So, um, I'm going to do the... Advanced. I'm going to click on this one more time. Okay, that's the exact same thing. All right, so I'm going to go up here and hit done. Just really pain to try to get a screenshot. But uh, I'm going to hit done, and I think that's going to put me into the Blivit GUI. Yep, okay. So it's all free space. <clears throat> now, I could go a couple different ways. I could... Um, try to figure out exactly what size I want each thing but that like I said is pretty hard I, I pretty well let me let's just go ahead and give it a look um okay so it's you know it's the whole disk is empty 
Now let's look on this system. Let's see if Blivet's on here. Let's see. That way it'll look the same. I would use G parted is what I would do. But in this, you know, I'm doing this on that machine remotely. I can't, uh, can't actually do that. Thought I had, uh, it's saying disks is not finding my disk management apps anyway. There's one partition editor for KDE, KDE desktop partition editor. It, it would work. It looks a lot, if I remember right, let's see. Oops. There, Blivet GUI. We'll go ahead and open that. That way we'll be looking at the same thing. You got to put in your root password. Because you can break your system. I think I just messed up. <clears throat> you can you can delete and see I even have my backup drives there that I could mess up. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna look at it. And uh so see here's my uh SD SDA, that's my system I'm working on. So it has EXT four of ten twenty four megabytes. That's the boot root boot partition. And then the um <clears throat> Um, the LVM has uh, root. Wait, yeah. Oh, that took it back over there. Okay, it's not showing you what's in there. Okay, so now here's the next one. We'll go. We'll do it this way. I'm not used to using this. SDB is my uh, Seagate expansion drive. That is the eight terabyte, seven point twenty eight terabyte. Four point fifty five is the five terabyte. It has a little. Uh, it's NTFS, and that's how it came, and I didn't change this one. Uh, it has a little 128 megabyte of hidden partition, then it has the 455 terabyte of data partition. Now, here's the LVM. There we go. Now we're looking at the LVM. And you do that, and it still doesn't show you what's in there. That's ridiculous. How you, you need to be able to read all that. <clears throat> okay, so here's how this was done, and I don't remember really if I did it any kind of custom, but so it has... Back to the beginning there. It has uh, a, a primary partition, the, the boot partition of just 1024 megabytes, <clears throat> just a gigabyte. Then the whole rest of it has got the uh, LVM on it. This is what my system's running on for door 28. Okay, so, oh, and it also has a swap partition. I'm not so sure that they're using swaps anymore for door 32. I've been reading it there. We're going to quit using it. But my uh, root partition is 50 gigabytes. And I may have sized that that way so that I'd have more room to not run out of space. Uh, the swap, 3.8 gigabyte. The home partition is uh, <coughs> is uh, 178 gigabyte. And you see this? They're EXT4s, both of them, but they are inside of the LVM instead of being primary partitions. That's how they do started doing it, well, at least by here, maybe before Fedora <coughs> 28. And that's fine. I've got the hang of it. Now, the sizing is um, the thing that would throw me around in circles. And the swap. I'm not sure if I need a swap. So, uh, I think what it, I think the way I can get around this Instead of trying to build all that up myself, I think if I just format this as ext4, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Could do FAT32 or whatever, and then go back into the installer and tell it uh, if it squawks, I'll say I need to make more space, but do automatic. I was wondering if I wanted to do custom. I could do custom still. I think. Uh, I don't know if it. I don't know. It's, they've changed. They keep changing stuff up every. Well, every time I do a new setup. I usually don't do I skip a, uh, a year before I do another one. But <clears throat> when I was doing 29 to set up a server, uh, I remember things were kind of different. <clears throat> and I can't, uh, believe it was brand new, it was experimental, and I didn't, I, it wasn't doing what it was supposed to, and I ended up using uh, G-Parted like I normally do, because that's what I'm used to. 
but uh, what I think I can do then, I can make sure, yeah, I'm on, back on my installer. Uh, let me check my stream again before. I had a feeling I might want to do that. And let's do it. This is much better than the last time I tried to do uh, a, uh, <clears throat> do an install. I've actually been working on it. Like I said, since then, let's do it. This is much better than the last time I tried to do. Uh, yeah, everything's good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is a, a kind of a workaround that I figured out years ago that I think will still work. Uh, add a new device. See if I right click in there. Edit. So the partition table new. It's not. It doesn't use the same words I'm even used to. What's the information? Oh, it's not going to do anything. Okay. Yeah. I would think add new device. I, what it should say is add a new partition. They're saying add a new device. Okay. Edit selected device. I think that's what I want to do. Partition table. MS DOS. No partition table. I really don't think I need to do that right now. That is the one you would use. Um, I think all I really want to, I was just going to format it to uh, add new device. I'm going to right click and say new. That might be new part, uh, partition. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so I think that is something different. Well, let's just check and see. Add new device. I think that's completely, I don't know what it is. It, I wasn't paying attention to the picture very well, was I? LVM, VTRFS, or partition. Okay. File system. Okay, yeah, this would be doing what I want. Okay. And if I right click on it and say new, is it the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Did you just. They just want to change things up to confuse people that have been doing it for the last 10 years. <clears throat> okay, so um, SDA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, it's already unformatted, so I'm going to just format it ext4 because that's a, the, the new Linux partition that's most used. I don't want an LVM or anything. That will get complicate matters. I want to, you could do easily do ext2, 3, or 4. Well, I don't know about 2 and 3 anymore they might whack it out but I'm I think I've done it before when it was uh, X fat I think that's fat 32 B fat no that's not fat 32 it doesn't have fat 32 in there it should yeah V fat might be fat 32 that's I think that's another way they write it out okay so anyway that's what I want um, I got the size of it. Where is it? 683. I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to do a mount point or any of that stuff. It's going to be primary. And uh, I'm not doing a screenshot of that. <clears throat> the whole thing. And I think that will make the... Uh, the auto installer be able to do it for me error check storage or press down again to continue oh well I'm gonna have to look at this this is getting to be a, another one of those you have not defined a root partition which is required to, oh okay they're wanting you to manually set it up for the full system got to do that okay then we're gonna delete selected device which scares you scares me because it should say partition <clears throat> the device would make me think it's like gonna take the drive out of this system and won't be there okay it's back to free space Reset all. Undo last action. 
So let's just do that. Because I'm not sure what's going on here. It's beginning to worry me. Okay. Now we're back to free space. Oops. Well, that's what I want. Okay. Because I just realized, let's go back. Well, now it won't let me get out of there. Okay. Uh, let's see what it's saying. Oh, it needs to MS dose or G parted on there. I mean, G GPT. <clears throat> so, um, set partition table, MS dose. I'm going to quit taking screenshots. It's just making it more confusing and harder. Okay, that should be okay. Now then, or you can do this to continue. Oh, I said I was going to quit, but see, if I look back at these, it will help me sometimes without having to go watch this whole video. Do I have to say do it? Is there somewhere to say do it? Undo, reset all. It's not going to let me out of there now, okay? Huh. I'm going to preserve that selection. See if I can get out of there. Okay, now. Your customizations will result in the following changes taken after you return to the main menu. Partition table MS DOS on the HP Logical Voya. Accept changes. I'm going to say yes. I'm getting myself turned around here, kind of guessing at it. Okay, so this is uh, <clears throat> quite a bit different than the way Gparted works, and that's aggravating. It says error. Okay. Okay, I'm going back to automatic. I would like to make additional space available. That might be a good way to get it to do what I want. <clears throat> so it'll reformat this whole thing. Anything I uh, messed around with, it'll fix it, hopefully. So that one's still checked. None of the others are checked. So it used to be bad about automatically adding other drives into your your system, even though you didn't want it. Let's look at that again. Let's see. You have not identified a root partition yet, yeah, which is required for installation of Fedora. You have not created a bootable partition. Okay, I'm going to have to do that. See, once you get into the custom, you're kind of stuck in custom, no matter what you do. Did it do it? <clears throat> okay. Add a disk. No, we don't want that. That was network disks and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep it on our... Well, no, there's nothing formatted there, though, is there? Yeah, so I, that's probably not going to help. There's no... That's what I was going to do if I'd have formatted ext4 and it would have worked. Then I would just do that, and then it would go ahead and just override it automatically. Let's try custom, <clears throat> and uh, set as boot device. <coughs> <coughs> Close it. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be all right yet, but uh, I'm gonna. I may end up having to. Okay, now let's go back to automatic.
I may have to. Ma okay, automatic. Not enough space. Back to where we were. Okay. Uh, it's good to get on the website and read uh, how to do this stuff. Even if you already think you know how to do it, because they change things. Let's go to custom. Do that again. Set as boot device. Now let's see what it does. Ah, okay, it took me to here. Okay, available space, total space. Okay, this will help you in doing all that. Um, instead of you know the way you have to just know everything in the Oblivion GUI. Prepare to create them automatically. What do we want? We need, haven't created any mount points. Okay, that's one that's tricky. You got to figure that out and do it right. I don't have any partitions made. I don't want to, and that, oh, that's the ISO I'm booted to. So no, we don't want to use that. LVM, standard partition. Huh. Okay, I think we really need, we need a boot partition first. I know that much. Yeah, this is getting, I think you need to go back into Blivet and set up some partitions first. Oh, wait. Standard partition, add. Mount points. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either going to be, I think it might be forward slash boot. I can't remember. Or it might, you might really want to uh, cancel. Did I ever click on created automatically? We don't want it on that. I think I'd, I'd be better off doing it. There we go. There we go. That did work. 1024, I wasn't sure if they might have went up. Sometimes they can make them bigger, uh, but it's still 1024. 15 gigabyte SDA3, which is a weird way it's laid out, but as long as it works, unknown, okay. Swap, okay. Why is it only 15 gigabyte? That must have been what, what uh, the automatic partitioning did. Now, is this going to be, this one should be, Standard partition, yeah. XFS, no. We want EXT4. You got to do this in here. Okay. Now, and that should be the, yeah. Boot, yeah. Forward slash boot. Okay. The swap, it will be swap. That's swap. Okay. This should be, you can do it. If you want it to be an LVM, though. Wait, that's boot as well. Oh, it's all backwards. Oh, this is, yeah, I remember this. I ran into this the last time I tried to do all this. Did they swap places or something? Or am I crazy? Okay, so the boot partition is good. It sh I would think it should be SDA1, though. It's all out of order to me, but it doesn't matter as long as it works. I know that. Uh, the unknown is my ISO I'm booted to on the USB stick, but it, uh, it sees it. Swap is fine. That's evidently how big. That's a pretty big swap, isn't it? 31.51 gigabyte. Now, <coughs> um, the log logical volume, I don't want to change anything. But there is two things I'm going to need in here, though. <coughs> uh, I need... Uh, I still need, okay, I want this to be an LVM. There we go. We don't want it to be XFS. We want it to be XT4 again. Oh, I'm not going to change the volume group name. I'll leave that alone. Name root. It's probably not really what it should 
speed. Uh, you know what? Well, I already tried automatic and it didn't work, so I have to do this. But to me, it would make more sense to uh, go back with Libet. I'm just not sure if it's going to work good for me, maybe because of its new names for how the old stuff, you know. Uh, and in this case, I can't just go, oh, I'll just use, I could. I could reboot this thing and start over uh, and boot it to something that could, uh, with Gparted on it instead of this. <clears throat> but I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Hmm. Note, the settings you make on this screen will not be applied until you click on, oh, the begin installation. Okay. Okay, now we need to do the LVM. One storage device, so I'm not getting any of those other drives I don't want to get. Okay. The size should be everything that's left. Three. Okay. Yeah, that'll let you change the volume group name. I don't want to do that. I don't know about the RAID stuff there. It already is a RAID, so I'm not, I think you'd let the RAID controller take care of that. Yeah, that'd be the software RAID. You don't want that. Okay, I don't want that. <coughs> um, update settings. There we go. So that shows its volume group and stuff is all it did. But, yeah, I remember this before. So, what was it? Three? Oh. There we go. Available, yeah, 366. If you'd pay attention, then you'd, you'd know what was going on. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you won't get your, uh, it said 636. Why is there only, why is there 14 gigabytes still left? That makes sense. Six. Six. <laughs> 31 let's get my calculator out and see if that'll help me <sighs> okay so 683 oh it's not on yet okay 683.51 683.51 minus 1024 minus 10. Well, that'd be, I want to work in gigabytes. Minus 1 equals 682.51. Okay. I just said 1 gigabyte. Well, that's what, that would be right. Okay. Now then, uh, minus 31.51. Equals 651. So why was that number over there wrong? Did I see it wrong? 651. I want the whole rest of it filled up with that LVM and then put my EXT4s inside of it. Yeah, boot the LVM. I don't think it should be called root. It's the only thing. But I might have to change that. The swap. Okay. Now then. Now there's 1.4 megabyte. That's fine. I'll leave that. That might actually need to be left alone. Not sure. Okay. So. Um, now I want to add. Can you right click? No. Now I want to add. Amount point. Oh, okay, I want root. I'm gonna. Where's I can't do root because that's already called root. That should be called. Uh, well, that would be root. I want to go ahead and do the LVM like they they normally do now. I, I know how to do it with with just primary partitions pretty easy 
it's in, it's this software that I'm using that's so unusual to me. I know what I want to do. I just the software. Where's the place where the name went in there? Name, yeah. That's LVM is what it is. Let's see if that will allow me to do what I want to do now. Yeah. LVM. Okay, now let's see if I can keep wanting to right click in there. Home, var, swap. I want. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure I want to make my root partition first. That's the boot. Yeah. Boot ext4 1024 name SDA label boot. I'm not gonna add. Sometimes the labels screw you up if you try to. I mean, you would think, well, I could just call it boot, but it might screw me up. It might actually make the operating system not do like it's supposed to, or something. So I'm gonna leave it alone. And a lot of times they'll put it in there once you do your LVM. Ext4. Oh, now the LVM should take up everything. Yeah, and you do need, yeah, you do need to do that. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna add a mount point. Well, I'm just gonna start with home. Desired capacity, let's see. I really don't know how much. I know I only, I want around a third of it. Uh, so that's 600 gigabytes, 650 gigabytes. Let's see. Divided by three, 217. That's pretty big. It's a pretty big. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get G parted. Get it open on my machine again. Now, I'm not going to use it. I'm just using it to read the. Uh, this time, for one thing, I just want to show what I'm talking about, but, you know, using Gpart instead of Blivit again, but I understand it so much better. Okay, so this one, yeah, oh, it doesn't show the individual stuff. It's the EXT4, one gigabyte. Uh, LVM PV with, uh, it's called LVM PV now instead of just LVM. I was going to try to spread, oh, I can read everything but that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Fedora Nova i5. Yeah, I can't see inside the, the OVM with this. And there's my, and the other two are my backup drives. Okay. So that's the one good thing about the Blivet. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and open it up again. It's the exact same program, so. So. Uh, yeah, one gigabyte, and then the whole rest of it, this is what I'm aiming for. The whole rest of it is uh, the LVM. That's what I'm trying to do now. But what I need also is the, the, uh, now the swap. See, it's only 3.8 gigabytes. That's what freaks me out about that being uh, 31.5 gigabyte. I guess it's doing that because it's such a big drive, so much bigger than I've ever had as a main drive. Okay, and then see my uh, my root is, uh, I know that because it just says forward slash. Well, yeah, another one says forward slash home. It's 50 gigabyte. And then, and I haven't had any trouble with it being filled up. I did on the previous machine. And I couldn't resize. I, I didn't, well, I didn't have any backup drives to put everything on. To, and then I ended up getting another machine, and getting these backup drives over the years. And Yeah, see, the home is going to be the biggest one. But that's 50 
178, so say 180. Um, I don't know if that's a third of it or not. Let's add those together and see. Oh, and then there's the, uh, I'm scared to even be on something in there. Here, I'll screw it up. Uh, slip of the mouse or something. So 683.51 gigabytes. It's not all that critical, but I don't want to waste space. I don't want to make a big old root partition and not be able to. Oh, you know what? No, yeah, this is the LVM. And so inside of the LVM, I can create more stuff. The problem might be the mount point. That's why I can't. Yeah, that's why I can't do that. Uh. What can I do? LVM is logical volume, if you didn't already know that. Um, let's look over here. I haven't done this in several years, so, well, a year or so. The physical volume, see, logical volume, this is the physical volume. Uh, the whole thing, SDA, and then what's that? And that? SDA 2, 231, that's actually inside of the LVM. So the physical drive space there, the, the volume or the partition is 232. Inside of there, the LVM is 231. You lose a little bit for some reason. And then that... I don't know why that's marked that way. It's nothing, I guess. <clears throat> um, like I said, I'm not used to using Blivid. It doesn't look like what I'm used to. There is another partition manager that kind of works like this. And uh, But I thought sticking between you know this one on both ones, it would be a little less hard to figure out. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just trying to see. Well, there's two things I'm trying to. Okay, yeah. LVM... B. It's in the LVM, EXT4. What I'm not quite getting is swap. Yeah, see, those are inside of there. Okay, let's go to the, okay, here we go. Yeah, now this shows, did I click? Oh, that's physical view. That's logical view. Okay. So home, root, and swap. That's what's how it's, you know, how it's laid out in the, uh, oddly enough, it shows in this that home is at the beginning. I don't ever think of it. I don't know if that's how it really is on the drive, inside the volume, on the drive or not. Uh, well, let's see. What did I say? 217 times 2 equals 434. Yeah, see, for instance, that whole LVM, that's the LVM and another view. Oh, that's a logical view as well. 231. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm kind of throwing myself in circles now. I didn't expect, I was trying to go fast and uh, wasn't expecting to have any trouble. Um. don't really see a reason to have such a big swap but I am not sure I did click on that and it did it for me so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it but it doesn't go by what it just looks I think it goes by percentages of whatever size your drive is and maybe it needs that but uh, I don't think it'd be easy to like resize that and, and put the leftover back into this LVM though that would be pretty hard it's actually easier to do it at all all primary partitions. That's the way they used to do it, but I don't want to do that because, well, for one thing, the LVM gives you safety. You can resize LVMs with 
uh, without you can do it while the system's running they say and uh, not break it you know so that'd be a good thing <clears throat> It kind of came, the LVM's logical volume management came from server days, you know, servers anyway. That's how they did things, but uh, with different file systems, you know, not these AXT4s and stuff. But, uh, <clears throat> um, where I'm hung at is when I say add one, and they say add a new mount point, I want to add a home, but I also want to add, let's try that first. I don't know why I would want desired capacity. What did I just say? 434. Say 651. 651 minus 500. That's 151 gigabytes left let's see 651 minus 450 201 to me that sounds better like more of the ratio I would want let's do that uh, do that device let's see 651 I'm going by the size of the whole LVM 651 Divided by three, 217 plus 217, 434. Okay, so 651, 651 minus 450, 201. Oh, okay. That's should be good thing is when you start with the size you get down building you, you don't realize you did something wrong a lot you know you don't like it and it's not just something wrong but you don't like it until you get way on down there Let's see you've been using it for a long time something fills up or you realize oh i'm wasting space <coughs> oh Two oh one. So if I do I already forgot what it was. Four fifty? Six fifty one minus four fifty. It's two hundred and one gigabytes. That might be really more than I'm gonna need on that. Let's see five hundred oh six hundred and fifty one gigabytes. That sure sounds like plenty of my root partition. Because it, 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 it's just the files that goes along with installing. That's only, you know, the only thing that makes it grow is the files that goes along with installing applications and, uh, and cache and stuff that would go in there, temp files and stuff. So, 500. I'm trying to make it a round number because... Now, where did it go? It should be in there. I don't see it. Oh, fail to add new device. Okay. Okay. Twenty-four. I'm starting to think that the Vivit is easier to use than this is. I think maybe this. Uh, that's the root. You know, that's the root partition mount point root, and I think that's what's got it screwed up. So I don't know what to call it to get it. To let me play with that to play nice with me let's see uh, I think that's the one 
the other one. Yeah, this is the other one. It's uh, the Fedora Disk Manager. It's laid out a little different. I don't know if it's actually any easier to read, but see, this is what I got here. 1.1 gigabyte ext4 and this is the uh, partition 2 which is lvm pv is what they call it here um all the other drives and then they call it a 54 gigabyte block device too many synonyms i think um so dev, Fedora, Lenovo i5 root. Yeah, see, that's not, that's different, isn't it? So that's why I like to use the automatic because, yeah, when you're using the LVMs, I think it, I just not realized by seeing that. I think that's what my problem is. I was kind of trying to do it like they're all physical uh, primary partitions. Well, I remember how to do it, and I think that's how I need to be doing it. It's just getting more and more. Uh, yeah, if it's going to be inside the LVM, then I guess it's got to be like that. So, um, yeah, home, they're all dev, so-and-so, so-and-so. I pretty I imagine that's exactly how it needs to be, and that is getting really complicated for my little pea brain right now. <laughs> uh, well, I've never went that far to set one up like that um, so uh, still gonna have to do something for some reason it just wasn't I mean I could oh you can't copy that I was like I could I could I can type that out dev fedora or well it won't be fedora it'll be uh, what it would be what I'm trying to say if I wanted to dev it would need to be uh, Fedora HPL oh I see my host name I gave it Fedora HPL I think it's actually gonna do that for me this is gonna be well this one, oh which one's the root I mean the LVM it kind of name is it got dev sda2 oh this one would be dev sda1 yeah i don't know one way or the other if they would have changed that that says boot that makes sense to me all the dev stuff uh this may just be another way of writing it out uh I don't know. I'm not going to try to copy that now because I don't, do not know. Now I'm stuck. This is aggravating me now. I really didn't expect to have trouble with this. I thought it would just automatically do it. So I'm going to say reset all. Reserve reset selections. Now we're back to where we were. Reset all. That's my ISO. Okay. LVM. It says LVM. I changed that, didn't I? Let's leave it. I think, yeah, I think I changed it to standard partition. Maybe that's why I screwed myself up. Let's do this again. See if it turns out to be it's the same thing as I had. So evidently, no. Okay. Reset all. Try one more time and then what did I do? Reset all, reset selections. Okay. Standard partition. Yeah, see if I, I was thinking if I made all the partitions I know I want and then let it do that. But uh, I'm not so sure. Oh, it's not really a good thing there. I guess that's. Shouldn't click around on that. Reset all. 
There we go. LVM. Well, I'm going to see what standard partitioning would do in that. It didn't do anything any different, I don't think, other than boot. Oh, wait. We have boot. We have uh, SDA3, SDA2. Yeah, so boot is one. You want this to be ext4 sda okay that's all good and then this one you want it to be This is the logical volume? It says it's named, oh, dev SDA is the logical volume. Huh. The whole thing? Well, this would be root. ext4. What did I say? Uh, 636 is what, see it says 636 is what's there, but it was actually different. 636 minus 200, 496. Oh yeah, but this, this is the whole thing, right. Okay, I went around and around with that before. But now it has the labels, the proper drive labels on it. Uh, oh, I told it to be a net, nor, uh, ma regular partition. Now I don't have the option to do LVMs. Okay. And I don't want to do that. I know that LVMs are good. The odd thing is, though, it says it's a logical volume. SDA is a logical volume. So SDA... Evidently, SDA is the logical volume. Well, I guess it is because it's an array. array that may, it, it is a logical volume. Okay. So, uh, SDA, and then inside of the SDA, maybe I'm trying to do something that doesn't work right with RAIDs. I've never set one up on a RAID. Um, anyway, uh, I do get that it's just defaulting a really small size. I remember that for whatever reason. I don't know. And then you need to give it the sizes you want. I mean, I could probably get by that way. I could uh, make me... Uh, okay, I have a swap. I have a boot. And then I would divide this one up. A, a SDA2 would be 1, 2, and 3. I'd need... A, SDA2 would be my... I would make my root and... Uh, whatever size I want it, then make another one with the whole rest of it. Uh, but that would all be primary partitions, I believe. Unless, well, this says this is logical. Huh, that's something. Maybe I'm not in as much trouble as I think I am. But uh, I'm going to reset all. I'm going to try going back into the Blivet GUI because I think I actually understand it better. It'll let me get out of there. You got to get rid of everything you were trying to do to get out of there. Okay, so now I'm stuck in here. Uh, it defaults to LVM. I'm going to do it that way again because I think that makes more sense to everything. Yeah. Boot, root, swap. Let's try adding the home. Put the desired capacity, okay. It says it has, oh, I see. You can't do that yet. 
this has got to be made big enough. This doesn't make sense. You don't want it to be, uh, okay. It is an LVM, right? Okay. That's what we want. So I want it to take up everything. Six, not no, well, you can't take up that total space available space. <laughs> That's saying that because, um, it says 15 gigabytes. But, uh, oh, yeah, I added all that up before. Okay, 6, let's do it again. 683.51 minus 1. 682, okay, yeah. And then minus 31.51. Oops. Yeah, I screwed up. I messed up on my calculator and lost it all. Uh, so it's going to be 32.51. Okay. 683.51. 683.51. 63 minus 32.51. Minus... Okay, 650.9, 650.9, I'll just say 650, well, I'll do it, 650.09, all right, now, update, still have some space left, 924 megabytes left. I don't know what I did wrong. Plus 924 megabytes. Well, that's megabytes. But it's about a gigabyte of space. I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> 683. Yes, I'm terrible with math and calculators. 51. Minus one gigabyte equals messed up again. A little harder I try to do this right now. Now the first I'm getting six eighty three point fifty one minus one gigabyte equals six eighty two point fifty one. Now minus thirty one point fifty one minus thirty one point Six fifty one. Okay, it should be six fifty one evidently. Okay. Six fifty one gigabyte. That works. Yeah, that's how I ended up doing it last time. Let's do a screenshot of that. <clears throat> Maybe if I remember I can use that screenshot. Okay. But it's saying it's root. Instead of, I uh, actually don't know what it would be. It won't, shouldn't be root like that, though, because root should be inside the LVM. Where was that? Uh, oh, it's called root because that's what it is in there. Oh, last time I changed it to LVM, but that didn't help me any. So... Yeah, well, that is my root. I must be just doing it wrong then. So, 651 minus 200, 451. So, I want, I would like for my home partition to be something more even. It's one of the reasons I'm doing, going around and around. Uh, I'm real. I'm thinking now that maybe if I don't make that, no, I was wanting okay. Device LVM, this is the size it should be. Yeah, last time I named it LVM, but I couldn't 
work in it anymore. Maybe it's because the main disk is a logical volume. And that's my whole problem with trying to do what I can't do. LVM inside an LVM. Could be it. Standard, oh, it's just our standard partition. Okay. Oh, now you can't call it root. Okay. LVM. What, what happens when I make it a standard partition? I can label it. And call it root. Well, I tried it the other way before. Let's try it one more way the way that seems to be. I really don't know. I, mean, I just realized doing this on the server might be why I'm you know, going in circles because it's already, uh, after finally reading that enough times, I finally realized, okay, the device I'm working with is a logical volume. So trying to make a logical volume inside of a logical volume, it may work and it may not, uh, but it's, it probably makes it more complicated, that's for sure. But yeah, I wouldn't want to call it root if I was going to do it. I want to call it LVM or LVM PB. <laughs> Uh, like the other ones, but uh, but where do I want to mount it? Can't just mount it there because that's where my root needs to be. And a while ago, oh, there we go. No. A while ago, I was clicking on something that was allowing me to. Uh, yeah, I don't want to change any of that. Um, allowing me to. Changes it to LVM, just like we would want it. I can't imagine what to use there, though, besides just forward slash. So, but that's not it either. Yeah. Actually, I think what I, um, I wonder if I could get out of air with it like that, would I be able to go back to automatic and let it do it for me? Let's try that. Okay. Because if it'll take that, oh yeah, look at all that. Why has it got so many? This is seems to have hung on to all the different things I tried. Yes, look at that. That's a crazy mess. This is the craziest art partitioning app I've ever seen. Why did it hang on to all that when I kept, I kept trying to make sure I cleared it every time. Cancel return to custom partitioning. Can you believe all that? XFS boot. That's what, uh, SD cards and USB sticks are formatted as now and Linux. Actually, I don't think Linux can even read it. If I remember right. Yeah, I can't read them when I put them in here. Uh, Fedora 28 doesn't. Uh, but I can reformat them, though, with, you know, one G parted or one of these other parts and make them FAT32, and then they work great. Okay, so I want to get rid of all that. Reset all. Oh, I see what's going on now. I probably need to go. See, that looks like it all got taken out. And there's nothing there but just my uh, what I'm booted to. So it doesn't look like there's anything there. But 
but that's my store, my logic. See, it's a logical volume. Yeah, but I keep on not even be able to get out of here to go back and do it differently. Oh, it's still, they're still using swap. It says uh, you have not defined a root partition. You got to do that. You've not created bootable partition. You've not uh, created specified a swap, although strictly required, although not strictly required in all cases. Oh, it will significantly improve performance. Okay, so they haven't got done away with it, but uh, create mount points. New mount points, new see I, you know this has happened before. <clears throat> You're stuck here <clears throat> trying to uh trying to get out of this. I'll just leave it on the LVM again, do that, and then this time I'm going to go in there. Yeah, you can hold down control and select them all. Okay, don't mess with that. Okay, now reset all. Reset selections. Now, let's see if we can get out of that. No, we cannot get out of there. I remember getting hung up in this before now. After a while, you finally remember. And, uh, I'm going to do the standard one again. Let it do it. And then what do we got here? Boot. And then swap. It's the same kind of thing, though. It doesn't even, it's crazy that they <clears throat> have XFS in here. This app must be uh, not strictly just for Fedora. <clears throat> they just decided it, they liked it and put it in here because. Uh, And now I've got XT4 on the boot partition and then the um, SDA3. I'm just trying to do something to get it out of there with me, without me having to completely start over. But you know what? It may be quicker and easier to just completely start over. Uh, reboot the thing. I'm going to have to have a break pretty soon. So. Uh, Yeah, that's 15 gigabytes. Um, well, instead of, I forgot how much it was. What was it? I don't know if I want to, you know, take the whole rest of it again like I did a while ago, or well, let's see if I can get out of it. All I'm interested in now is, <coughs> all right, it's doing that again. I guess I could accept the changes, but. After you go back and begin installation, yes. Yeah. See, nothing's been done yet. But you don't need all this extra junk. Well, wait, SDA 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, yeah, that's all junk. D store a format unknown, so that's something I did. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, 
seeps it once you get stuff to get in the queue it's hard to get out i don't know how to get it out i'm gonna say a sep changes this time I went back to it. Okay. Not enough space still. Exactly the same as before. Now this time, I'm going to go, yeah, now I can get back into Blivet. That's what I wanted to do. Storage configuration will be canceled. Very good. That's what I want. Okay, now we're going to do this. Kind of had a feeling when I was looking at Blivet before. Okay, now none of that's been done, so none of that's there anymore. Um, let me check my. I'm gonna have to have a break. I can't even continue. But I, now that I'm back to where I can use Blivet, I think I can get around in it, even though it doesn't name things the way I'm used to. Um. I want to make sure my stream's working. I don't know if I want to go off on my break and uh, <clears throat> see if it's working like it should. Yeah, you can see what I just did. I don't know if I want to go off on my break. I don't know if I back. want to go off on my break, uh, or if I want to. Well, it'll be quicker than anything. I'm just gonna go to my uh, music and saying that I'll be back, and I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Had to take a little break and uh, we're back on the Fedora 32 <clears throat> installer, you know, doing on remote desktop. Let me look at my stream, make sure it didn't quit on me or anything while I was gone. Stream, make sure it didn't quit on me or anything while I was gone. All right, uh, yeah, we're back. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see. Well, I got back into the, I got out of all that uh, custom partitioning. That one's pretty, pretty strange to figure out. I remember uh, now. I start remembering every time I got in there, I got turned around. I think I figured out how to use it once. Or twice, but because it's been around, well, I know it's been around since Fedora 28, I think before that. <clears throat> but, uh, well, there's always been a custom partitioning, but that particular one, the way it is. Oblivion GUI, I know I was using, it was, I know I was there in Fedora 29 when I was setting up the server with that, but, uh, <clears throat> or a desktop as a server, not a real server. This is my first real server. This is a, a <coughs> HP. Uh, DL three eighty G seven server, and I have it. I have a uh, six drive set up in a RAID array with six hundred and eighty three point fifty one gigabytes, and then there's two other drives that I just put in there, kind of as placeholders. That uh, I put them in their own separate uh, drive pools, I guess you would say, single drive pools. Uh, um, then I'm planning on putting a probably put a couple of big really big SATA drives in there uh, <coughs> later and use them for backup <clears throat> but uh, the one my backup drives are one of them at least uh, I got to keep one of them for, with the backups on it you know but uh, one's a five terabyte and the other one's an eight terabyte and I'll probably put the five terabyte in there I gotta take it there you know they're the USB backup drives the Seagate USB backup drives I'll gotta take them out of the um, Go ahead and make that full screen again. <coughs> take them, uh, gotta take them out of their case or shuck the drives, as <laughs> Morton, Morton, the server <coughs> guy, says. He says that's what the cool kids call it. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not sure if they're if they are actually the right size. This server actually uses the drives, or I always get the numbers wrong. But they're the same basic dimensions as a laptop drive. These are, uh, I can't think of the right name. These are real server drives, SAS drives, SAS drives. <clears throat> okay, so uh, anyway, I'm trying to get right front. I'm going to be right back like I was because, okay, I'm thinking again. Okay, there's th all this free space now, right? I, I got finally got all those uh, out of the custom. I got that all took out of there. It went by just I got out of it, accepted whatever it wanted, what it was left in. It wasn't, I didn't realize that I wasn't deleting all of my, you have to select when you have three or four things in there, you got to select every one of them to take them out. Well, it kept saving them and I had like 10 things in there that I didn't want any of them. Finally, I got uh, back into the main screen, you know, by just accepting it as it was. But that doesn't actually happen until you do the install anyway. And so then I said, okay, then I clicked on uh, custom install with the Blivit GUI uh, partition editor. And so now it's back to free space again. None of that, no damage, you know. But so I either need to use this and set up my partitions the way I want them, or I was thinking, what did I think? I think. I, Oh, the, the problem is I can't use automatic partitioning because it <clears throat> keeps saying I don't have enough space. And that's because it's default. I figured out by going into that custom one, keeps defaulting as to 15 gigabyte for the whole drive. You know, well, that's no good. And I thought, okay, maybe I need to just go in there to that custom again, set it up as uh, the full space. Don't try to add a home and all that junk. And, uh,. <clears throat> then maybe the automatic would work but then again I do know that it will probably not make my root partition as big as I want it I've had to do that manually the last several in, uh, installs uh, for since about Fedora 24 
so I think I'll try to do it. I'll go by this one that I'm running, yeah, you know, right now. I'm going to open up. I've got Blivet on here. And uh, on the system I'm working on, must have spelled it wrong. B L I V E T. Okay. <clears throat> And I do know now that by using that custom, but using some of the automatic, one automatic function in it, kind of picking your mount points and all that, um, <coughs> it does use the same size, uh, one gigabyte or ten. <coughs> <coughs> one gigabyte uh, boot partition or 1024 megabytes. And then see the rest of the whole. Then the rest of it is LVM, and then um, if you go over here, you can see what it's divided up as. <clears throat> so that's what I was trying to do with that custom partitioning tool, and I couldn't do it. Uh, but um, so I'm going to try. I think I will go ahead and try setting up the partitions the way I want them. The crazy thing is, see, I've only got. 3.8. I think I let the system do that. This one I might have just done it with automatic. I can't remember anymore. But it's only got 3.8 gigabyte of swap, and it was setting up 31 gigabytes. I don't know why. It was. I never seen a swap anywhere near that big. I think. Uh, I guess it. It's kind of going by uh, percentages. You know what size of drive you have available, but. Uh, Uh, let's see. I don't think I can end up. Yeah, see, when you do that, it still doesn't tell you what the rest of it is. What I'm wondering is, okay, so, okay, SDA, one, two, three, like that. Swap. Okay, they're inside the LVM now. See, all the, the swap, the home, and the root is inside the LVM. That's the way I know they do Fedora now. I mean, that's why they did it on 29. I don't think they're going to change it on 32. <clears throat> so SDA is the one gigabyte. And then that should be SD. Well, that's LVM. It's not SDB. I think it might be SDB. Yeah, I think it is. For NG, like in G-parted. No, that's SDB. And this is SDC. Oh, so my backup drives are SDB and SDC. Okay. So it's just going to be <coughs> SDA and LVM, I guess, right? That's really different than what I'm used to. All partitions would be SDA, B, C, you know, like that. On, if, if, but not with this this setup, I guess. <coughs> so, so much trouble with coughing well it's gotten so hot in here it was 81 point something degrees six probably 80.6 now i turned it down i turned the air conditioner down and then before i know it somebody's turned it back up <coughs> but everybody's asleep now so it shouldn't bother them i was on 75 i've been on 73 a few hours ago anyway uh, um the third time this evening, I've turned it down, I think. I usually don't bother it if I'm not miserable, but since I'm running the server and it's getting so hot in here, I'm miserable and I'm coughing. Okay, so... Now, if I look at physical view on the LVM, then, yeah, SDA... Oh, an SDA2. There we go. So it is SDA. Okay. It's, yeah, I, I was getting mixed up. SDB is a different drive. SDA2 is just another partition, which it's... Okay. So first I want to set up... <coughs> well, I'm going to set it up. I've always done it. When I do it myself, I set up the boot the home and root and then swap on the end that's the way it looks like it is on this one maybe i did that it kept putting 
you know, when I was doing the, using the kind of the automatic. I don't know what, let's see. Home, well, in logical view, home, root, and then swap. Okay, well, that's the way I, probably where I got that idea. And I do know uh, the boot partition needs to be at the very beginning. Uh, otherwise, it would, uh, <clears throat> where it might see it, well, after so big of a drive, it, even Linux won't see it after so far up into the drive, I think. But um, So let's go over here. I just kind of want to make sure I'm not somewhere in this that I'm going to break my file system. you got to select something, so I'll select the swap. If that got broken, I could I could probably fix that. Okay. So we're going to add we just want um, one gigabyte XT4 label boot Mount point boot, I think. Let me go look. Can't really read it. Oh, there's where I'm going to get into trouble because, see, this is written out completely different. The other ones, you can actually read all that, <clears throat> and it'll say dev, SDA, and all that stuff in this system. That's going to be getting in over my... It's not that I, I don't understand it or anything it's that I can't remember it I can't see I type I can't see straight letters and numbers swap I can't ever type long thing that's long to me you know it's too long for me to type out right I can do forward slash home you know things like that forward slash root I can go a little ways but not very far things like that forward slash boot you know so advanced options <clears throat> I'm going to try it and because uh, I can't, the, I was going around and around the other ways and I couldn't get it to work. I don't think you need a forward slash after boot. I think it goes like that. That's what I was going to look for and then I didn't see what I was thinking I was going to see. And then uh, <clears throat> 682.5. Let's see. That's what's left. 682.5 divided by 3 equals 2. I must have done something wrong. Let's just say 682. It's it's gonna this this the thing it's gonna round off when you're working in gigabytes, you it it's gonna round things off for you anyway. So well point five is quite a bit. Point five. 500, um, half a gig, I can't think now, 682.5 divided by 3 equals, I'm out of hit times 3, 227.5, now I don't want that big of a, I do remember it was like 31, <clears throat> Look in the uh, screenshots I just took. <coughs> <coughs> I'm having more and more trouble seeing my <coughs> calculator. I guess I'll try. I don't like using the calculator in the computer because it doesn't uh, work the way I expect on the keyboard. And if I try to do it with the mouse, which what I, what I really end up needing to do, that's hard for me to do. So I'm not used to it. Let's see. Pictures. I was looking at my. Uh, oh yeah, got to remember one thing. Uh, if anything went wrong and I had to upload my backup file, well, it's five point five gigabytes. If um, the biggest file that you can upload to YouTube is ten gigabytes, and when I go for long periods of time like this, 
from streaming. If it doesn't work and I have to upload it, um, yeah, three hours, um, then I wouldn't be able to. I have to edit it, and I don't want that. I'd rather st start a new live stream. So, uh, 35 gigabytes. Got yeah, 31.51 gigabytes of swap space is what it keeps giving it. I don't really know. And that's and that's just what it thinks it needs for some reason. I'm gonna. I want it to run good. I just can't imagine it needing to be instead of 3.8, 31. I can see it being even. Um. I mean, it's just, it's you know it's from Fedora 28 to Fedora 32. It's it may, and what I'm thinking is maybe it's doing that because the bigger your drive, the more it really does need more swap space. But I don't see why, because the swap space is well, you know. I, I guess I'm not thinking. I know, you know, it's the, the operating system. It's it's kind of like uh, I guess is it called a swap file? The Windows cache file, swap uh, swap file, whatever it is kind of like that but it's an actual partition on our drive <clears throat> anyway maybe it needs that for like when you're uh, I'm just thinking when you're backing things up and you're copying using lucky backup or copying files with Crusader uh, maybe that's uh, needs that to make that work right and I wasn't you know it's not just the cache and temp files you know for uh, the operating system it'd be for things like copies now I'm afraid to go any smaller than that. I mean, you could probably go 32 gigabyte or uh, 31 gigabyte, but I'm scared to go to like 10 gigabyte or five or whatever. I also don't like wasting space, but I think I'm going to go ahead and you you know you would think you could just depend on Fedora's installer to do what's best, but well, for for one thing, it's not even. Uh, I'm not going to go back and back in those screenshots, but you know, it was only giving me 15 gig. It's, it's the default was 15 gigabytes. It was giving such a small amount that I couldn't even install it. And I was having, that's what got me into having to do this. <clears throat> and, and I do know that it's always made the root partition smaller than I end up needing. I always end up filling them up after a few years. So, but the next, I want, okay, I got boot. Now I want, well, I need to figure out the swap because, and they, I'll go ahead and do the swap because that's how they were doing it. Kind of makes sense now. It shows you what space you got left. I don't think it really matters when it might. Well, I can figure it out and then do it. I can do my LVM and leave enough for the swap space. That's what I can do. So, um, I think I'll close this Blivet GUI over here that's on my real system that I'm running. I don't want to get mixed up and do the wrong, work in the wrong one for one thing. They do look different. I got the idea now, so. I already kind of had the idea, but, I mean, I had it, but I didn't know if things had changed the way they were doing it. 31.51. Well, let's just do that. <clears throat> Thirty-one dot fifty-one. I don't want to run, keep running things that I don't need to run. <clears throat> What I'm trying to think, oh, yeah, I was going to go ahead and open up the. Okay, 682. Now I have to get off the keyboard and go down here and use the mouse. That's what I don't like about using this. 682.5 minus 31.51. I'm going to say 32. 
650. Okay, now I'm going to make an LVM 650.5. LVM2, that's what another name for LVM2 is what they were always used to call it before they started putting that PV on there. <clears throat> 650.5. PE size, 4 megabytes. <clears throat> I don't remember what PE stands for. It's going to be like sectors and stuff, I guess. Well, it won't be, it's not a, this is actually, <laughs> it is a logical volume that I'm building in uh, on, on the, you know, the RAID in the RAID. So I think I can still do it though. I think it'll work. Okay. Uh, LBM. There we go. Free space. Oh, go slower. So SDA one, XT four. I might should have called it SDA two. Oh no. My uh, router rebooted, so you probably don't hear me. <clears throat> Yeah, I can't even <coughs> for speed. Wait a minute. <coughs> oh yeah, it's four in the morning and my router reboots at four in the morning. <coughs> that will could actually break all of my my uh try to open up Firefox and it's not even opening up. <coughs> it's just taking its time. <coughs> I may need to reboot everything anyway. I've been going for a long time. Can't reboot the computer. I can close apps and open them back up. But um, Firefox still hasn't come up. There it goes. Come up over there. see if I lost the live stream I bet I did yeah it looks like it stopped it at 317.25 so in order to be that long they need uh, some help so they are inside of the LV what I'm trying to think oh yeah I was going to go ahead and open up the I'm trying to uh, find out what the end of it was. LVM2 is what they were always used to call it. PE size. I still do it though. I think it'll work. Okay. Uh, LVM. All right. <clears throat> so. Seems like it lost sound. Yeah, it would lose sound. Well, it shouldn't we lose go. sound. There it is. Free space. Oh, go slower. So SDA one. Yeah. So it definitely lost my live stream. So I have no choice but to start again. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. Oh no, it won't be the same one anymore. So I will have to go to my uh, my regular channel page to see when my new stream comes up. So.
So, go ahead and... Sorry, I forgot what to do. Oh, oh, I do still have a camera. Okay. It didn't lose that one. Let's see if it lost the other one. If I don't have to go and reboot all my cameras, I'll be much happier. Okay, they're working. Uh, <clears throat> desktop. Let's see if my audio one is still working. All right. Are you working? No, it's not working. Okay, so lapel. If I'd have been using that, that's what that's what ha happens to me a lot because I'm always doing this at night when my router reboots. But I need to have it auto auto reboot. So uh, let's see if yeah, I didn't reboot the computer or anything, so that's all just fine. Okay. So um, I do have to re reboot the uh, phone, re at least restart the app for sure, and uh, <clears throat> then I'll start a new stream. Uh, I don't, there's nothing, I don't think I'll need to re-upload uh, this backup file, but if I do, I, I'll have it. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.